Uh-huh, I sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. Y'all listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only, Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. Okay, here we go. Um, I was working out. I was talking to a buddy of mine. And I was telling him something that Bishop T.D. Jakes told me one time. I heard him say it. He said, uh, I would hate to die and not do the thing that I was born to do. I would hate to die and not do the thing that I was born to do. Man, oh man, oh man. Man, that hit me like a like a pile, like a pile of bricks, man. Because it made me feel so grateful that God has allowed me to live my life this way. Now, and I'm talking about grateful for all of it. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And I have had all of them. The person you see today, it ain't always who I was. It was on the inside of me, but it hadn't externalized itself, if that's a word. It hadn't been bought out. It was in here, but it was under development. Who I am today was a process. But like I said before, don't trip. He ain't through with me yet. Even today, I'm still an imperfect soldier for Christ. Today, I still fall short, oftentimes. But I'll tell you what, I'm ever grateful for the life I have. And you know what? I want to encourage everybody today to explore your possibilities. I mean, man, explore your possibilities. Why would you not want to find out, discover, or know what it is God got for you? Why would you not want to achieve or accomplish all of your possibilities? Now, as I ask you this question, I want you to know that the devil is busy, that he plays mind tricks. So as you hear this, I already know he's saying to some of y'all, yeah, Steve, that's easy for you to say, but I didn't got myself in this situation right here. Ain't nothing too hard for God. Nothing. Nothing. And see, so as you listen to me, try to try to get your mind open to this. Why would you not want to explore all of your life's possibilities? What's possible with your life? And I'm talking about from right where you are right now. I'm not asking you to change. I'm not asking you to do anything. I'm telling you. This is a fact that God can get you from right where you are right now. Broken, misled, misguided, misunderstood, mistaken, all of that. Misfortunate, all of the misses you've been talking about in your life. You know, you, I missed the lottery. I, I missed my ride. They fired me. I, I missed the deadline. I didn't get it. Miss. People, people, people just miss they self to death. If you've been all them misses, God can get you from right where you are. God a home run hitter. I'm here to tell you that. He's a home run hitter. He's a put him over the wall whenever he want to all the time. And you can be a recipient of some of these home runs. He'll put the bat in your hand, but you got to swing. Now listen to me. You got to stop feeling sorry for yourself. You got to stop holding yourself down with beating yourself up. He won't hold you down about it if you don't hold yourself down about it. But I'm going to tell you one more time, the devil is busy. So what the devil do is he make you think you ain't worthy. He make you think that you've done something so despicable that you can't come back from it. He makes you feel like you so low you can't go up high. He knock you down and make you feel like you've been knocked down harder than anybody else. You can't get up. He roll you so deep down in that ditch you can't see over the edge. God can come get you from no matter where you are. I'm telling you, man, you ain't in no hole too deep for God. 
Magic Johnson to tell you that. Listen to me. You ain't in no hole too deep for God. Steve Harvey can tell you that. You ain't in a hole too deep for God. Tyler Perry can tell you that. I can name you some people. Bishop Jake can tell you that. I could tell you. Kenneth Ulmer can tell you that. Bishop Kenneth Ulmer. I could tell you some people. Kirk Franklin can tell you that. Donnie McClurkin can tell you that. I just know some people personally, man, that done been in a hole. I, Joel Osteen can tell you about it. I know some people, man, been down, been in a hole so deep. I bet you Paula Dean can tell you about it. See, and, but but you know what, then here we go. See, we see, see, you know, see, we don't we don't like to talk about that because now we want everybody to pay extra hard for some mistakes they made. When clearly, and excuse me for being a new Christian, but there is a prayer that I've been saying since I was a little bitty boy, and it took me till I was a grown man to understand it. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So see, it ain't my job to hold nobody down to keep my knee on somebody's neck. Who am I? I'm going to need some forgiveness in a second here, probably today. See, so all this, you holding people down with the way you feel about them and she shouldn't have said this and she'll never get, i never support this again. Man, get up. Get up and get real. You for real? You think you ain't finna need forgiveness real soon? You ain't finna make a diabolical mistake in your life? You don't think you are? I have thousands of them. Probably gonna make a few hundred more before I get up out of here. So I've decided to be in the forgiving business because I, I want God to forgive my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass against me. You understand? See, excuse me for being a new Christian. I'm, I'm, I, get, I get tired of talking to, 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 uh, uh, to people, man, supposed to be saved and talking about they're a Christian. I don't want that type of religion, man. I ain't in that no more. I ain't in that. You can call me wrong if you want to. Say it how you want to say it. I ain't in that no more. I ain't in all that. You can feel how you want to feel about me. But I got proof that God work in my life. You know, I, I can't hardly get it out sometimes when people ask me something about deep on, on the inside of me about my soul and how I used to be and, and my journey and my trip. Because people don't know the trip I've been on. Well, you may have been on one worse than me. But you know what? You ain't in a hole too deep God can't get you out of. Man, I, wish, I, want, I want people to remember that, man. God is a redeemer. He the great I am. So if you ain't got nothing now, what you asking for? You know, you might not have nothing because you ain't asking for nothing. Quit asking God to get you out of debt and ask God for a life of abundance. Then you take the money and you get out of debt. You keep asking to get out of debt. You keep being in debt to get out of. Come on, man. What you asking God for? I'm just tripping today. That's all. I'm sorry. I apologize. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. It took four murders before the police finally realized that one person was responsible. I will admit the others when you catch me, if you can. Signed, Freeway Fan. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. It appeared that she was probably either dragged out of the car or thrown out of the car. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen by the mother. Did my mother see me? That guy is, he's out of sync with even the worst people. I thought that they would catch him. I thought it was just a matter of time. Is it possible that the killer is still alive? Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Ladies and gentlemen, dun, 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 dun. that's a horn. That's an announcement. Royalty has entered the building. The Kang is back. Truly, truly honored to be here today, wanting to give all of you credit for upholding the... Thank you, thank you, David. Wonderful now. This is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We're beginning it with a visit from the Earl of Ottingham. Truly, truly an honor to be here. Hello, hello, uh, young Thomas. Yes, good morning, Earl. Wonderful to have you here. Uh, Queen Carla, how are you, darling? Hey, Duke, how you doing? Wonderful. Her Majesty, Shirley, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful to see you. Hello, Duke. Hey, 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 hey. 
<laughs> Things are going quite well with me. I just wanted to say I listen to the show from abroad. Okay. I have the iHeart app. Nice. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Yeah. And being like the only that. black inside of Buckingham Palace, no one knows it, of course. Mm. I'm being quite quiet, you know, since the queen has left us. I'm sitting here hiding from the king. He doesn't know I'm here. I'm staying out the way because he's gotten rid of <laughs> everyone. <laughs> oh my stay. God! The new <laughs> king is deplorable. <laughs> he he no idea why. He, oh my God! He is the most horrible man. You've heard no stories of kindness coming from the palace since our wonderful queen passed away. Aww. <laughs> yeah. Well, well I, do, I, do you get to watch TV over there? Did you watch the NAACP Image Awards? Do you get to look at all that kind of stuff? They don't have that here at the palace. No. No. Okay. no. Nothing at all concerning blacks. <laughs> what do you do for fun? I mean. There's no fun here in the palace. It's merely survival. I have <laughs> a few friends. Yeah. Uh, well, I have some blacks that I sneak into the palace at night. There's a tunnel <laughs> we have. <laughs> Not the t- Straight from the royal kitchen. Making okay. sandwiches and grilling steaks and everything. We, been going on for quite some time. Uh, I have a get together every Saturday night. <laughs> it's every week. Huh? Every Saturday. <laughs> Cards, spades, Midwest, <laughs> dominoes, a wonderful time. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's about it's about nine of us that get together every time. They don't even know I'm there. Nice. I'll tell you one oh. thing, if the king finds out that the horrible man. That's, that's it. A, that's a wrap. Now, have you noticed you don't hear anything about the palace anymore? No. Nothing. It's quiet. Shut down. Quiet. All media credentials have been suspended. Oh. Wow. <laughs> really? He doesn't want anyone to know anything. He's over here just treating everyone <laughs> horrible. It's because of that book, huh? Prince Harry. That book. Oh, it's that book. It's him, really. <laughs> Back to him. <laughs> it's him and that god Ugly woman. Oh, my <laughs> Lord. Camilla. <laughs> oh, the nerve of you. This is Diana for that. That's no trade-off at all. I just wanted to come in and say good morning to everyone. Have a great right, day on Earl. the show today. Earl of us. Coming up in 32 minutes after the hour, we'll hear from the nephew as he runs that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for the nephew to run that prank back. What you got for us, Neff? We're going to do a little lashing out this morning, Shirley. We're running that prank back. We are lashing out. This is for all the ladies that the eyelashes are just a bit too long. <laughs> just a bit too long. If it's past your nose, uh, we're lashing out, okay? You we're lashing see. out. Let's go, Cat Dope. Hey, it's lashing out. How can we lash you out? I'm trying to reach Bianca. This is Bianca. Is hey, listen, my name is Brian. My um, my wife Jamie come up Hi, there and get her eyelashes done. Is uh, who the, who's the owner of this place? I I am Brian. What's going on? Okay. What's going on? You be you're Bianca. You the one that owned the place. I'm Bianca. I'm the owner. We opened about a year and a half ago. Proud, happy, black owned, women owned, women owned establishment. What can I do for you? What okay, here's the deal. I'm sick and tired of my wife coming up there, and then when she get back home, she got these thick ass eyelashes on, and they long as hell. You know, I mean, it's they, these eyelashes thicker than somebody's mustache. This a damn shame. You know, now I didn't told okay, her to take Brian, these. Brian, Brian, hold what? up, hold, hold up, Brian. Now I, I may or may not be the person doing it, but whoever, I'm pretty sure, probably that sounds familiar. But whoever. We have a lot of customers, but whoever comes in here, they pick their lashes. We, we, you know, we collaborate, but the girls are saying what they want done. They pick it. So if they're thick, they're thick because they want them thick. Okay, you know? well, these are too, they too thick and then, and they too long. Your, your eyelashes ain't supposed to be sticking away out past your nose. That's a damn shame. Uh, but let me let me tell you what I'm getting at, though. Here's, here's, here's my reason for calling. If my wife come home one more time, say what? Brian, you, can you simmer down? Because, I mean, I'm running a business here, and you sound crazy. They can hear you through the phone. The girls are looking at me in the chair. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Can you calm down? You're loud and screaming. 
All I'm saying is, if my wife come home with these long, thick ass eyelashes again, I'm going to come up there and raise holy hell at that damn place. And I'm telling you the truth about that. You're not. What are you talking about? Why are you threatening me? You are not coming up here. We just I'm coming up there if my wife come home with them thick ass long eyelashes again. I am. No, you're not coming up here. We just opened a year and a half ago. We are doing good. We don't need no drama from nobody. You need to talk to your wife. Fix your marriage. Don't come out here taking it Ain't nothing wrong love. with my marriage. The only thing wrong with my marriage is these damn thick ass eyelashes and they too long. Well, well, That's the Why are you why are you calling me with this? See now I'm yelling. Because at I'm my calling shop. because this is and where she got it? her eyelashes done. Oh my God. Oh my God. Then you need to talk to your wife. Okay, I need to calm down. I'm running a business here. What you trying to do? Sabotage me? What you work for the company? I ain't business? trying to sabotage somebody... nothing, but I tell you what, if she come home with these long, thick ass eyelashes again, I'm going to come up there and I'm going to find all the violations of codes and everything, building codes, and, and I will get you shut down if we, if we don't stop these long, thick ass eyelashes. Okay, Brian, I'm from the South Side. So, mother, you need to back up because now you're threatening my livelihood. Yes, I'm going to go there with you. You threatening my livelihood. You threatening the jobs of so many girls here. What are you doing? You need to talk to your wife and you need to back the f up. And I am sorry to curse. We try to speak class here, but now you're making me lash out at from lash out. But you need to back up. This is my job. And people have jobs. What are you doing? Threatening to come up here. I will call the cops on you, and you will not be able to come here, and we will not let your wife get her her, her eyelashes on you. And you need to fix your marriage because you got some anger issues. Clearly, you pissed off at your wife, and you calling us threatening to ruin our business. Ryan, what is your wife's name? What, what my, is wife's name is, my wife's name is Jamie. Okay. Does anybody in here know Jamie or do Jamie's lashes? Okay. It's like four girls raising their hand because everybody goes to somebody different. So I don't know who is does Jamie's lashes, but you got some anger issues, okay? I ain't got no anger issues. The only problem I got is my wife having some long, thick eyelashes, and, and they further out than her nose and thicker than somebody's mustache. That's what I got a problem with. Okay, you know what? Jamie just needs to leave your ass because if you got an issue, call her. Why are you calling us? It's four I'm different calling girls the people that, that put the, Why wouldn't I call the people that put the thick ass eyelashes on? Why wouldn't I? Well, first of all, you need to talk to Jamie and send her up here. We're going to tell her that to leave your ass, first of all. Second of all, I don't, I cannot help you. You are interrupting my grinding, okay? You are interrupting our grinding. And we got a business going here. What is your problem? Can't you go do some work? Go and talk to your wife and fix your marriage. You know, you know what? You know what? I tell you what. I tell you. I tell you what, Bianca. I tell you what. You're not trying to fix. No, no, no. You ain't trying to fix the problem. I'll be up there. I'll be up there, and and I will bring somebody that will shut that. Somebody call the cops right now. Call them now. Tell them somebody is coming up here, and they threatening us. And lash out. Call. See, they three girls calling right now. So bring your little up here, mother. Come on. Come on. Bring it. Bring it up here. Bring it up here. Well, let me ask you something. Is 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 Carmen up there? Yeah, Carmen is sitting in my face right now. What is going on doing? How, you know him, Carmen? It's, Why are you asking me about Carmen? Where, where's, where's Carmen at right now? She right here looking at me. What <laughs> What is going it's, on, it's, Carmen? Is she, is she laughing? Hold on. Yeah, now she's starting to laugh. What, is, what the <laughs> f*** is going on? Y'all got me looking crazy at my Hey, shop. Bianca, Bianca, calm down, baby. Check this out. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your girl Carmen got me to prank phone call you. Oh, oh, my <laughs> God. Carmen! Okay, you know what? Y'all got me out here looking bad. I cannot. Tommy, <laughs> Tommy, Nephew Tommy, oh, my nephew. God. Oh, my What's God. What's up, baby? You got away. Oh, my God. <laughs> What's up, girl? I'm just oh lashing God. out a little bit. That's all. I'm just lashing out. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, nephew Tommy. I was acting crazy. You got to tell the nephew what is the baddest, and I mean the baddest radio show in the land. The one, the only Steve Harvey morning <laughs> show. Always. Forever. I love y'all. No need for a standing ovation. No need, no need at all, Shirley. I'm good. Take a bow. You good. Take a bow.
Stick around. Another hour, right. I'll be more stupid. We know that for sure. All right, coming up next, it is Ask the Chief Love Officer, Steve Harvey. Ask the CLO right after this. Hello. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis wants to oversee Disney World in his, quote, parental rights movement. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Scientists has put together a crisis management team for this year's Oscars. And Essence announced its <laughs> first black women. Yeah, yeah, they don't want <laughs> any snafus this this year. Uh, Essence. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, because it makes them uncomfortable. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Same with all, all of this the going on. Mm-hmm. And gun violence, president. mass shootings, yeah. all this, and you worried about Disney. I understand, I understand the thing about the values of the kids and stuff like this. I think that we need to, um, uh, well, no, let me not say that. Keep your job, Steve. Go ahead, Shirley. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, we'll we're going to just move on. We're in the middle of awards season. We know that. The SAG Awards and the NAACP Image Awards just passed, and Not this Sunday, not this Sunday, but next, March 12th, we have the Oscars coming up, okay? We all remember what happened at the Oscars last year. We can't forget, and they won't let us forget, Will Smith uh, slapped Chris Rock on national television. We all remember that. Ooh, that was crazy. (laughs) I know. It was crazy. (laughs) crazy. (laughs) So did it. He did it, didn't he? We thought it was a skit. We didn't even believe it was real at the time. Well, 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 the Academy is making sure that nothing like that goes wrong this year because they have put together, now get this, they put together a squad of response professionals to immediately go into action if anything goes wrong at this year's show. All right? So they got slap security. Is what uh-huh. Basically. <laughs> what they basically. Got. They got slap security. Yes. Man, please. They wouldn't have had to do that. He'd slap me. But why you, you say that, we, Steve? We're saying, uh, what you saying? Uh, you ain't gonna need no committee. You gonna have to get. You gonna have to. You gonna have to rename this show and everything. <laughs> they had to go to commercial break immediately. <laughs> it's, it's no longer the Oscars, no more. Oh no! I broke all them statues backstage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you wouldn't have no camera operators. Um, be, what did they do? <laughs> I done broke the cameras and stuff at the Oscars. Yeah, it was wow. a mess. It was a mess. It was mm-hmm. a mess. Mm-hmm. I it's think it's mess. just a, it ain't nothing going to happen. It's going to be old dry ass Oscars. It's going to get right to on dry. back. They had a great Oscar going. It had a lot of great elements to it. And uh, it's going to get right on back to being a dry ass Oscar. Yeah. Mm. Watch. They had, Will, they had Will Packer, baby. He put I know. Good they had it. Man, it was going great. Yeah, and was. every you missed all the great moments because all we ended up talking about was the slap. Yep. yep. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, it overshadowed a lot of big all awards. All female hosts. Yeah, the, all Regina of that. Hall, yeah. Wanda mm-hmm. Sykes, Amy Schumer, mm-hmm. Beyonce opened the show, The Roots, it, The yeah. Award, all that. We lost right. all that. It overshadowed that. all of that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We lost mm-hmm. all that. Yeah. I wish somebody would slap Trump like that. Just walk up there and just <laughs> slap. <him. laughs> Paste out his mouth. Oh, you know he has security. He's um, never in his life been in a physical altercation. Oh, no. Ever. Oh, Why do you say that? Why do you say that? No, he's been rich. What? Who, who he been fighting? He's been rich all He's been a rich boy his whole life. And they don't get into fights, you're saying? Hell no. Where? <laughs> Where? I have heard of any. Rich people has been rich boys their whole life. Mm-hmm. Them the most Feather dust group of men you'll ever meet in your life. Just a little light. <laughs> so they, they don't fight. Oh, Somebody always fights for them. They don't have nobody oh, fighting. They fight Trump for ain't these never things. been in a physical altercation <laughs> in his life. He, I, 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 he'll go in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about this um, award show, the uh, 16th annual Essence Black Women in Hollywood Awards that recognizes black women making their undeniable mark in film and television and forging forward their own definition of what it means to be black women in Hollywood. Black Women in Hollywood began as a 400 person luncheon 16 years ago and has expanded into an oasis of sisterhood and a safe space for black women to fully see, hear, and embrace one another. The awards will be held March 9th in LA and can be uh, live streamed on Essence.com. 
So that's really cool to honor black women. I love women. that. Yeah. I yeah, love yeah, that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will be mm-hmm. watching that. that oh, is, for sure. Yes. Yes. That's for one sure. event that I would I would love to host. Oh, oh really? Yeah, yeah really, man, Steve. I would. Okay, yeah. put it out there. Because yeah. I haven't asked to host anything. You know, I've never mm-hmm. asked. They never asked me to host. We did mm-hmm. Image Awards, I think, me and... No, I don't know if I did. I don't think I've done Image No, it was BET Awards. Yeah, BET. I don't think I've ever BET. hosted Image Awards. They've never asked either, but that's cool. I mean, but I would. that's the one award I'd show I would love to do to honor Well, one thing women. for sure, you love black women. Mm-hmm. Huh? I said one thing for sure, you love black women. <laughs> with everything in me. Hello. And thank you for that. <laughs> yes. I'm talking about every it. fiber. The hate for <laughs> us is out there. <laughs> the every real. fiber in my body. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you for I that. love I love y'all like I like cold water. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and we love you too. Coming up at 20 yes, minutes sir. after the hour, the Dilbert comic strip is Pulled from newspapers nationwide over racist comments from his creator. We'll be back to talk about it right after this. No! <laughs> Loser. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, the comic strip Dilbert has been dropped by newspapers across the U.S. this week after its creator, Scott Adams, went on a racist tirade on his YouTube show, Real Coffee with Scott Adams. Adams' comments came in response to a poll by the conservative firm Rasmussen Reports that suggested that 53% of black Americans agreed that it's okay to be white. He said if nearly half of all black Americans are not okay with white people, then it's a hate group. Take a listen. If you know, nearly half of all blacks uh, are not okay with white people, according to this poll, not according to me, according to this poll, uh, that's a hate group. That's a hate group. And I don't want to have anything to do with them. And I would say, you know, based on the current way things are going, the best advice I would give to white people is to get the hell away from black people. Uh, okay. Wow. Who said it right do you need to hear that again? <laughs> Who His name that? is Scott Adams. He does the um, comic strip Dilbert. And yeah. it's in a lot of newspapers, or it was before they canceled Hey, him. Scott, whatever poll you got this from. Rasmussen Report. I think you need to, what was the polling question? Because if you're asking blacks, any blacks, have they ever had a problem with white, some white person somewhere? Mm-hmm. If black people think there's a problem with white people. The answer to both of those was going to be yes. And when blacks refer to white people, oftentimes they're talking about your policy. Mm -hmm. That's really because there are a lot of super cool white people in this world. I done met a bunch of them. So black people don't do that. They don't lump all whites together. No. Unlike some of you Mm. who put all blacks together. Uh-huh. And I think that black people have been one of the most hated groups to ever set foot in this country. To this day. We've been hated from the moment we landed here to this day. Mm-hmm. And then you have the audacity to turn around and say we are a hate group. Now, you need to rephrase that. We are a hated group, mm-hmm. but we're not a hate group. So what you want us to do is never respond to all the hate they get showered upon us on a daily basis. Your ass think that what we supposed to do is be okay with the treatment that we've received from this country with their policies, their laws, and the way we are done. And we supposed to be okay with it when you would not be okay with it for one day. Because let me ask you something, Mr. Whoever your name is. Would you trade places with black people in this country? What? Mm. <laughs> which black would you be willing to trade places for? Who, which one of us you think you got a cool enough life you would give up your privileged existence and come and yes, have sir. our existence? You don't want none of this. Not, oh, not even you. Not even you. Not even you. All right. <laughs> Coming up in 34 minutes is. after. Please. I think Sister Odell is here. I think I heard her. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, ladies and gentlemen, she is here, Sister Odell in the building. You hear her. There she is. Uh-oh. Whoa, 
Maggi Sì You've been in my life Oh, glory! <laughs> my Lord, my Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Morning, morning. Sister Odell. Morning, Shirley, Carly, morning, Mississippi Junior, Thomas. I don't want to waste too much time speaking. You know, y'all gives me the shout segment now. Well, Sister oh. Odell. That's Shirley's <laughs> idea. I'm pretty sure of that. <laughs> she hates yes. nothing segment. but love. Nothing but she love right here. She has never really cared for me. Oh, I just decided to kill her with kindness. That's why Aww. I stopped fooling with her. That's all I did, you know. Okay. So what's going on today? Well, here, here's something. I, I wanted you to come in for this because we were talking mm-hmm. about it. Nick Cannon, you know, has 12 children. 12 mm-hmm. children, Nick Cannon. Uh, well, he recently did an interview on Entertainment Tonight, and they asked him if he would have more children. His response was, quote, God decides when we're done, um, but I believe I definitely got my hands full. So I, I just wanted to know if you heard about that, and what are your thoughts on that? He says God decides when we're done. He is 12 already. Well, you know... <sighs> See these young kids now. Yes, ma'am. You know, you just <laughs> need to stop blaming everything on the Lord. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, they got drug stores almost on every corner. Yes, ma'am. Oh. On the way over there, you didn't yes, think ma'am. you'd want to stop? Pick up a little raincoat or something? <laughs> oh, Go on yeah. in there with some form of protection? Uh-huh. But, oh, yes, no. You're going to roll on up in there. Just naked, <laughs> and what you think was gonna come? I just don't. I just don't see it like that. I know your hands is full. Mm-hmm. Hands full, pocket empty. <laughs> you bleed well, he has that. The money, you know. Right? He he has some money. He hosts. Um, girl, you know, girl, 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 girls, girls. You got yes. to pay taxes, and you got to pay twelve child support checks. Good gracious! Wait. I don't know what Good money y'all keep talking about. Hell. Well, that's a lot. Well, he, it he is a lot. He hosts the mass. But, but is it the, the mass singer. singer? Yeah. He's EP of Wild and Out and all that. Ain't that many Need to put one of them masks on many. and go sit his ass down somewhere. One of them costumes. Worried about masks? Get a costume. You start wearing costumes when you go over these little girls' house. Since <laughs> <laughs> she ain't gonna stop by the drugstore, put the costume on. You need something to block your little activity, son. <laughs> Twelve children, you ain't even sixty. Yeah. yeah. Steve old as hell, he ain't got that many kids. But you know, the statement kinda means that he might have more, you know. Let him go ahead. Yeah, he left it open for that. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Keep on trying to act like you a white man like you Michael Douglas. Keep on having kids. <laughs> I'm sorry. What, Michael, Michael Douglas? What's Michael Douglas is having kids when he was 70. <laughs> White oh. men can do that. Black men ain't got no business oh. doing that. Just oh. popping children off like your ass been to be here forever. <laughs> <laughs> you black. You know you got high blood pressure. And you said instead of making kids. <laughs> Don't make no sense. Cholesterol up everything. <laughs> then he be wearing a little tight rags wrapped around his head and everything. A turban. The Have turban you ever chair. rocked a I turban? I don't know. Have you ever rocked one, sister? Odell, when I get turban? out the shower, you do. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> I you tie my head up sometime before I press it before I go to church. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. you do your own hair. Okay. Okay. Oh, um. girl, I ain't got to go to no beauty salon. I've been doing my hair for what now? About about ninety two years now. Ninety two. Oh. Oh, uh huh. Don't nobody need that. Don't even know how to do this no more. Oh. oh. I still put a conk in my head. <laughs> Oh. Ain't nobody done that since Malcolm X. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sister Odell. Coming up next, the nephew and the prank phone call for today, right after this. He got to laugh at himself. <laughs> <I see. laughs> oh. Malcolm X, who that was good? <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at about four minutes after the hour, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is, you need to know what you're getting into. Okay, Mm. that is the subject. We'll find out what that's all about right after this. But 
It is now time for the nephew and today's prank phone call. Nephew, what you You know you need to know what you're getting yourself into when you're listening to these pranks. Now, you Mm -hmm. need to know what you're getting yourself into. You might want to pull over. Tommy got one this morning. Here it is. Surrogate mother. Surrogate mother. Sounds yeah. harmless, right? Reasonable, Sounds harmless. harmless. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, nice, nice. All right, cat dog, let's go. Surrogate Hello. mother. Yeah, um, Roderick, can I, can I speak to Roderick? Yeah, it's Roderick. Hey, uh, this is Calvin, man. How you doing? I go to the same church y'all go to. Okay. I got your number from one of the guys at the church, man. They, they told me that if I wanted to talk to you, I could I could reach out to you or whatever. I, how you doing today? I'm good, man. I'm good. How can I help? Your, your wife, man, does she, I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything, but she seems to be real fit. Does she does she work out all the time? Yeah, she go to the gym every once in a while, bro. Yeah. Who, who, who is this, bro? Like I said, my name's Calvin, man. We go to the same church. Listen, me and my wife have been trying for a long time, man, to actually have some kids. And okay. to be honest with you, Roderick, man, it just, it just ain't happening, dog. I mean, we've been trying and trying, but what I'm trying to do now is just find another type of way to make this happen. Now, you say your wife is, is, is in good condition, right? My wife is in good condition, brother. What what does she got to do with you and your wife trying to have a baby? She, you know, now, y'all already got kids, don't you? Y'all got, like, from what the brother at the church told me, y'all got three kids, right? Yeah, we got three. I got two boys and a girl. Okay. Here's what I'm trying to do, man. I was hoping that I could find somebody, a female, that would be a good surrogate mother. A what? You you know, what I'm saying is, like, because my wife, I mean, you know, we want to have kids, man. We want to have oh, a family. Bro. Oh, oh, hold on, brother. You just said you tra- you're looking for a surrogate mother, and the brother of the church told you to call me? Well, no, no, no. Ain't nobody tell me to actually call you. I, I asked them about... You and your wife, you know, I asked them for your phone number so I could actually call you myself, man. Wait a minute. So you've been, you've been eyeing my wife? No, 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 no. Not, I ain't been, I, see, you're looking at it wrong. Listen, what I was saying no. is that your, your wife just seems like a healthy, healthy person. I want to be able to have a healthy child, man. I really do, man. That, me and my wife, we... we listen, 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 listen. You called me about my wife and you want her to be a surrogate mother for you. I don't even know why we're on the phone, brother. Here's the real deal, man. Me and my wife, we can't have kids. We tried and tried and tried. And, you know, biologically, we've just been going through it and going through it, man. And I was just, you know, I've seen your wife. She's healthy. I see y'all at church all the time. And I was just, like, reaching out, man. Maybe somebody wouldn't mind being the surrogate mother for, for, for me and my wife so we can have a child. I think you're a surrogate mother. I mean, I mean, dog. Hold on, brother. You calling me to see if my wife can be a surrogate mother to your child? Dog, and I, I know it's crazy. It's crazy. You know, you know what, I, and, 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 I think you hey. lost your mind, brother. <sighs> Out of all the members in the church, you calling me to get my wife to have your baby? Dog, I know it sounds crazy, man. I it do. I know it sounds crazy. But I'm right, just... ignorant, brother. I'm sorry. Oh, hey. You sound ignorant. Man, there's so many places to go adopt a baby. I can take you down to the county courthouse and show you kids need to adopt right now. But you can go to Africa like like, like all the rest of them people and go find you a baby. You're going to call me and my wife? There's 20,000 members in this church. Do you know how stupid you sound, brother? No, no, br- brother, brother. I, and, man, listen, man, I'm not trying to come across like that, man. Well, how are you trying to come across, brother? You done done it. Just hear me out, man. I don't want you to. Man, go, go ahead, brother. Go ahead, man. Okay. We looking for a surrogate mother. We look, we we seen your your wife, and we thought she'd be a great surrogate mother. And I know it sounds crazy for me to pick you out of all the people that go to the church. I understand that, man. I mm-hmm. do. But listen, we would love for your wife to be the surrogate mother, and we willing to pay for this, man. This ain't about. But listen to me. If you don't mind, we don't want to do this with no test tubes and all that. Where they they mix my seed with her with with, with her egg. We want to do this naturally. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You want to repeat what the f- you just said, man. No, you, you, you got to understand a real man want to do want to do man, it you, realistically. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm just saying. You, I brother, did, brother, hold on, hold on, brother. You, are you telling me that you want to have sex with my wife? But I mean, I mean, you know, you know, you, you, you want to have me a, lose all my Christianity right now, brother. You want to have a baby the real way, though. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a damn having the fake way. You tell me you want to lay down in a bed with my. 
wife? But, dog, you already got three kids. Think about the people that can't oh, have them, man. Don't go adopt the baby, man. Take your <laughs> down and go adopt the damn baby. Because you didn't go see a damn psychiatrist. <laughs> Bro, yeah, what I don't want to have your baby. Do you know what you sound like? Dog, you crazy? I, I know it sounds crazy, man. I do. How did, how did you get my number, man? Listen how to me. did you get my number? I got your number from one of the brothers at the church. Now, listen, I'm going to just be real with you like a man. I wanted to come at you first and talk to you like a man and see, you know, if you was cool with the proposition. But look, come Sunday, I'm going to go to your wife and just talk to her. What? I'm just going to go. I'm just going to talk to your wife and see if you lost your mind. I told you to answer no. Now you tell me to go around me and ask me. What you ain't going to do is talk to my wife. You yeah, call I'm my telling wife. you right you now. I'm talking to your wife. You next call Sunday, my wife. Okay? I'm gonna tell you what's really gonna happen. I'm you call my to wife. Your wife next Sunday. I'm not gonna sit and go through this with and you back and forth. I'm talking to her next Sunday. Next Sunday, I'm gonna whoop your. You ain't gonna do nothing to me. I'm gonna whoop yo. Me and my wife, we deserve a child too. You ain't, you ain't gonna stand in the middle of this. I'm, I'm in the middle of this. You lost your. You talk to my wife next week. You want to? I got one more thing I want to say to you, man. Is you listening to me? Say what the. You gotta say she can get off my phone. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your homeboy. What? <laughs> this is who? <laughs> this is this. Listen, man, who this is, is this man? This nephew Tommy, man, from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your homeboy got me to prank phone call you. <laughs> man. I'm I'm over here, man. My head is spinning. <laughs> you all right, man? You got me calling, brother. I'm I'm ready to fight, brother. <laughs> hey, I got one more thing to ask you, big dog. What, what, what's what up, is man? What is the baddest? I'm talking about the baddest <laughs> radio show in the land. Man, the Steve Harvey Morning Show, man. Y'all got me this morning, man. Y'all got me, man. Come on, baby. <laughs> You know, a real man want to have his baby the right way. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. You want to you want to conceive the right way. So, you got don't be selfish, man. I mean, yeah, that's the what, that's right what way. Me. Yeah, you want to have sex with you don't this man's wife? Test tube, all this artificial. No, no, man. We gonna do this the right way. You know. Mm-hmm. Give me a couple of hours, man. Let me a couple of hours. Let me knock this out. Don't don't get it. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do. That. Don't, you don't, you wrong don't for that. that. Yeah, Don't do you ain't got to, you ain't got to be like that. You ain't got to. Be like <laughs> but you was about to cry going <laughs> off on him. Oh, you got to. You got to go all the way in, Carla. You got to go all the way. In. Be be committed to what you're doing. It's important. <laughs> to the stupidity of it all. It's important. <laughs> the all right. You want more stupidity? Of it all. Of it all. We got stupidity yes. coming up for your April Fool's Comedy Jam number six. Oh yeah, here it is. Kia Junior Boy Spates gonna be on the stage. Rodney what? Perry on the stage. Dominique what? on the stage. Hosted by yours truly and headlined by one of the queens of comedy, the one and only Monique. That is April 1st, Dallas, Texas, Saturday night. Texas Trust Theater. Tickets on sale right now. You looking for some fools? There's a lineup of fools. It don't get no sweeter than that. What if What if we did this as a tour? You think that would work as a tour, Tom? Oh, if the money right, Junior, I would listen to the conversation. If the money is right, yes. <laughs> Y'all having a I meeting on the air, huh? Yeah, we having a yeah. meeting. Right here, right now. It's got to be right. Okay? You have a Allison, from you heard uncle. me. I said it. Yeah. All right, Baby. coming up next. Thank you, nephew. Coming up next, Strawberry Letter Subject. You need to know what you're getting into. <laughs> we'll get into that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. It took four murders before the police finally realized that one person was responsible. I will admit the others when you catch me, if you can. Signed, Freeway Phantom. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. It appeared that she was probably either dragged out of the car or thrown out of the car. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen by the mother. Did my mother see me? That guy is, he's out of sync with even the worst people. I thought that they would catch him. I thought it was just a matter of time. Is it possible that the killer is still alive? Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, 
Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you're looking for someone to help you unpack Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton story, you're in the right place. It's me, Gabby Collins. Come with me, because on Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, we're stepping behind the scenes and the drawing boards of this team to experience the life breathed into the Bridgerton prequel. Listen to the leaps executive producer and series director Tom Verica took to capture the feeling that's put that lump in your throat. And you've got to catch creator Shonda Rhimes. She's dropping gems, diamonds, and mics. On this podcast, we're going beyond the basic line of questioning and getting to the heart of the show, all while appreciating the contributions of the show's creative teams and remarkable cast. Go inside each episode of Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton Story with the creatives, the cast, and creator Shonda Rhimes leading the way. Listen to Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, Thursdays on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you get your podcasts. It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, on work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com. All you have to do is click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. And you never know, it could be yours. Mm -hmm. It could be yours. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry Letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, you need to know what you're getting into. Dear Stephen Shirley, my brother has been married for almost a year, and it's been a rough year for him and our family. He met her online, and she ended up being an old friend of one of our cousins, and before they got married, our cousin told him not to marry this girl. To make matters worse, she shoved me and put me out of my brother's house. Before the wedding, she told my brother that she was getting liposuction on her tummy and it would take three days to recover. She went out of town and came back eight days later with a bigger booty and she had a breast lift. She came back with, um, like I said, a new body, a whole new body, and he didn't speak to her during the recovery. I don't know what made him stick with her and go through with the wedding after that. He said that she told him she didn't need his consent to do anything to her body, but now she needs his help with all the medical bills that keep piling up because she's been having a lot of complications from her booty implants. She does not have any feelings in her left cheek, and I think it's karma. My brother keeps complaining to me and our parents, and our solution is to tell her to kick rocks, but he won't. A lot of things aren't what they seem with her. She's always been the type to jump from man to man for money, according to our cousin. With everything that's going on in the world now, there should be a database of men and women, so we will know what we're getting into. It's like the Carfax system for people. (laughs) My sister-in-law clearly has self-esteem issues and needs to love herself before she can love my brother. I'm not trying to be in her business, in their business, but... It's a lot for my brother to deal with. And on top of that, he hasn't had sex in five months. What should he do? Well, I think he should stop telling uh, you guys all of his business, okay? That's first. That's what I would tell him first. Uh, This is his wife. This is his marriage. Love it or hate it. Your cousin told him not to marry this woman before they got married. He didn't listen. I don't think he listened at the time because this is who he wanted, and he did what he wanted to do like most grown people do. Uh, (laughs) Now that he's in it, he needs to man up and either try to make it work with the new booty or get a divorce. If he's staying in it, it should be between him and wifey what happens. She probably does have a lot of medical bills for all the work she's had done. But your brother is certainly under no obligation to pay them. Uh, That body makeover, like she said, didn't need his consent. But now she needs his money to help pay for it. This is a mess. Uh, The fact that he hasn't had sex in five months after only being married a year, that's bad. I, I think that's bad. But you shouldn't even know that. Why do you know that, sister and the family? Why? Because he's telling you guys everything. And of course you care because he's your brother. But but there's nothing you can do, sister, about any of this. So my advice to you is to stay out of it and let them work it out. Steve? Met the girl online. (laughs) Here we go. Another horror story of something (laughs) gone wrong online. Yes. Now, there are a lot of success stories, too. Mm-hmm. 
I read a survey that says 65% of all marriages now come from online dating services. Okay. So there are some success rates. Problem we're having right now is too many cooks in the kitchen. I tell people all the time, best way to get married and stay married is to form a two-handed circle. Took me a while to figure it out and learn it, but uh, me and Marjorie make all the decisions now. And the kids have no vote. We don't have a democracy. We have a, 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 a dictatorship, and it works out just fine. It's a monarchy. I'm the king. She's the queen. That's what we have. All right. This guy right here, like Shirley says, tells every damn thing that's going on. He met a girl online. Turns out that the girl is an old friend of one of y'all's cousins, and before they got married, your cousin told him, don't marry this girl. Then she goes right into this the next statement. To make matters worse, she shoved me and put me out my brother's house. Hmm. Now, let's stop for just a moment. Okay. What did you do to make her shove you and put you out your brother's house, which is her house now? See, <laughs> that's where you're wrong. It ain't your brother's house. Hmm. You get married, it's her house. She shoved you. Why? Because you was in that time. This is my brother's house. You ain't got nothing. Uh, uh, uh. See, see you, you part of this problem here. So you got shoved and put out. And guess what? You left. You get put out. And you know how I know she left? Because she said, and she put me out. Uh-huh. Which means she had the right to. And your brother couldn't say nothing. So now we got a woman that's writing this letter that don't like this girl. So the whole letter is based around that. Before the wedding, she told your brother she was getting liposuction on her tummy, and it's going to take three days. She went out of town and came back eight days later with a bigger booty, and she had a breast lift. She came back with a new body, and he didn't speak to her during her recovery. I don't know what made him stick with her and go through with the wedding after that. You don't know. You don't know why he stuck with her and went through the wedding after that. Bigger breasts and a bigger booty? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I was waiting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you don't see how he went through with it. I don't see how he could have not. Hold, hold the thought. Hold the, hold the thought. Um, <laughs> we'll have part two of Baby. today's Strawberry Letter response from Steve coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Today's Strawberry Letter subject, you need to cool. know what you're getting into. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, come on. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter. Uh, the subject, you need to know what you're getting into. Yeah, you do. Uh, this lady's writing this letter because his brother met this woman online and married her. Now, cousin knew her before, old friend, forewarned the guy not to marry her. Then right after that, the woman that's writing the letter tells us that, and the other thing is she has shoved her and put her out of her (laughs) brother's house. Now, you went over there doing something, running your mouth, got up in the girl's face. She married. It ain't your brother's house no more. It's her house. And you got shoved. And then you said she put you out. And the reason she put you out, because she had the right to. And guess what? You left. So then what would you do? You left and you went to the house and started typing and wrote us. <laughs> Immediately afterwards? Immediately, because you're trying to get some damn support. <laughs> then here come the facts, you say. She told your brother that she was going to get a tummy tuck and she would be at liposuction. She'd be out of town for three days. She was gone eight days, and she came back with a bigger booty and a breast lift. She came back with a whole new body. He didn't speak to her during the recovery. I don't know what made him stick with her or go through with the wedding after that. What? <laughs> you don't one, know. Because when she please. came back, he saw her and went, God. <laughs> Ooh, Lord. Apple bottom make him want to bite. <laughs> Apple bottom make him want to bite. Yeah. That boy said, I got to marry her now. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. more of everything. <laughs> well, now, then she says, he says she told him, uh, and then, uh, like like you said, you don't know what made him go through with the wedding. He says she told him she didn't need his consent to do anything with her body. Mm. 
But now she needs this help with all the medical bills piling up because she's been having a lot of complications from her booty implant. All right now. What does that mean, all right now? We have you must trouble. Have the biggest one they had, dog. With the booty implant. You know why you have it? Why? Because that ain't your booty. <laughs> mm. See, these women are getting all these booty implants. <laughs> Y'all need to start running some tests. See, when you go to get a kidney transfer and stuff like that, they run tests to make sure oh. that the kidney or the organ is compatible, compatible with the with your donor. Body. You uh-huh. do that all the time. Okay. Uh-huh. Y'all need to find out, uh-huh. does your body reject silicone? Uh-huh. Does your body accept Pixar Flat? <laughs> Can you flat. jam That's Botox in your booty? <laughs> does your body respond to Styrofoam? Do you need to start looking into down and stuff like that? Maybe you need down, like duck feathers. <laughs> like you, like a, uh, a comforter? Yeah, you got to do something. Now, you done run out here and got some booty implants that don't fit your body. Now you got medical procedure. K. Michelle told y'all. Yeah. Uh, they, done been, they got documentaries on it right now. They keep telling y'all, but y'all keep going to get these asses so y'all can get on Instagram anyway. and walk and look back <laughs> over your shoulder. Cardi B said something too about it recently, didn't she? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's and now you say anymore. she don't have any feelings in her left cheek, and I think it's karma. I can't stand when people <laughs> try to make everything karma. Mm-hmm. You know, they the judge and jury. My brother keeps complaining to me and our parents, and our solution is tell her to kick rocks. I'm mm-hmm. thinking divorce. Yeah. But he won't. A lot of a lot of things aren't what they seen with her. She's always been the type to jump from man to man for money, according to our cousins. According to your cousins. You don't like the woman ever since she pushed your ass. <laughs> That's what this whole damn letter about. She pushed you and put your ass out the house, and you went right to the house and started taping, typing Steve Hall morning show. And now we got email. Yeah, immediately. And now you want to tell it all. Then she says, uh, that should be a database of men and women so we will know what we're getting into. It's like the Carfax system for people. Well, it ain't one. It's not. It ain't one, and it ain't going to be one. No now, dating thing. sites put flags on certain profiles, men who are womanizers and stuff like that. They got that. My sister-in-law clearly has self-esteem issues and needs to love herself before she can love my brother. I'm, now, here's the part that does. I'm trying not to be in their business. No, you ain't. No. But it's a lot for my brother to deal with. And on top of that, he ain't had sex in five months. Now, I want you to listen to this whole What's statement, and that? I'm going to make a statement. <laughs> I'm trying not to be in their business, but uh, it's a lot for my brother to deal with. And on top of that, he ain't had sex in five months. You know what I got to say? None of this is true. What do you mean? Nothing you said in that statement is true. You ain't trying to stay out their business. Oh, yeah. You done wrote a whole letter with nothing but their business. Ain't none of what you do in this damn letter. <laughs> All this letter is about they damn business. Mm-hmm. So stop lying. And then he ain't had sex in five months. That's another lie. <laughs> that is a lie right here. That's a lie. Why now, your you brother ain't that? telling you everything. Your brother having sex somewhere. Oh. Five months for what? You done bought all this booty and breast back up in here, and we ain't doing nothing with it. <laughs> so they're paying all these medical bills. I tell you what. Leave your comments on today's <laughs> Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM, and uh, check out the Strawberry Letter podcast <laughs> on demand. Coming up next, it is Junior with Sports Talk. <laughs> we'll hear from him right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. Junior, what you got? Well, well, here it is. Tomorrow, NFL Combine starts tomorrow in Indianapolis. Mm. Hey, man, down in Hey, man, let's see what's happening. Tommy, this was us. We may not get him, though. C.J. Stroud, we may not get him. Because uh, uh, the Bears are looking to move the number one Chicago. pick. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're looking to move the number one pick, man. And what, guess what's who the Texans it? pick? Oh, two. Two? two. Number two? Yeah, we're number two. Yeah. So who, who they want to move him to? Oh, who who Chicago want to move him to? Well, well, the Colts want the number one pick, and they oh, want to move. Pick. Colts ain't got nothing to get. Yeah, well, they want to give up these picks to get, you know, C.J. Stroud. 
or or Bryce Young. They want one of these quarterbacks. That, that doesn't matter. We got to get one of the other time. That's all we, we got to do. We're going to get one of them. We got to get one Dog, of them. Y'all, y'all number two. Yeah, we got to get one of them. Y'all's Thank choice you. is simple. Whoever left. <laughs> that's, that's not who we, we want Bryce Young but whoever you want left. Bryce Young or you want CJ Stroud yeah he one of them simple. gonna go number one y'all get the other one well yeah whatever no nah, 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 we don't want that uh, what all the noise is you making if I didn't ask you what you want we want a Super Bowl in Cleveland <laughs> Here we go. Nobody give a yeah. damn about what you want. <laughs> we want. We want to win and see. You don't take I'll what take, they give you. Well, 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 well. We want. We want who we want. We want Bryce Young. That's who well, we you're want. not going. You, damn it. <laughs> Where, where's this Shut anger? Up, Steve. What are you mad this about? Anger, Steve? He mad about our pick. I don't uh, know why he mad. About he's sitting pick. up in here talking about what he want. <laughs> well, why are you <laughs> mad about that, Steve? No, because I want what? a billion dollars. Oh, hello. Okay. Don't you want ten million? Question. Yeah, yeah, I want ten million. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do you have okay. it right now? Hell no. You know I. But got you still it. want it, don't you? <laughs> yeah, you know now I let me ask you a question. It. Would you take a hundred thousand? I'm I'm taking that now. Why are you waiting on the ten? If I gave you a hundred thousand, would you take it? Yes, sir. Yeah. And that's the damn quarterback y'all fitting to get. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Junior, please man, continue with your sport. I was, I was trying all... to, man. And we done. Thirty seconds left now, but I see what he's saying. But dog, that's not that's not fair. We want what we want. Fair. You quit debating <laughs> with him, Junior. Why did you yeah, debate with him? Because he Junior, always make it seem like it's just fair. about him and Cleveland. Get him no. out your segment. It's and quit not debating fair. With him. <laughs> yeah, it's not fair. I don't even like the debate continues you, but... off the yeah, air. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Junior. <laughs> We'll have a few questions from Steve Harvey FM when we come back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. It took four murders before the police finally realized that one person was responsible. I will admit the others when you catch me if you can. Signed, Freeway Fan. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. It appeared that she was probably either dragged out of the car or thrown out of the car. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen by the mother. Did my mother see me? That guy is, he's out of sync with even the worst people. I thought that they would catch him. I thought it was just a matter of time. Is it possible that the killer is still alive? Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you're looking for someone to help you unpack Queen Charlotte, a Bridgerton story, you're in the right place. It's me, Gabby Collins. Come with me, because on Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, we're stepping behind the scenes and the drawing boards of this team to experience the life breathed into the Bridgerton prequel. Listen to the leaps executive producer and series director Tom Verica took to capture the feeling that's put that lump in your throat. And you've got to catch creator Shonda Rhimes. She's dropping gems, diamonds, and mics. On this podcast, we're going beyond the basic line of questioning and getting to the heart of the show, all while appreciating the contributions of the show's creative teams and remarkable cast. Go inside each episode of Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton Story with the creatives, the cast, and creator Shonda Rhimes leading the way. Listen to Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, Thursdays on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Okay, Steve, this is from Steve Harvey FM. This is from Jay in Tennessee. Uh, Jay writes, my wife and I have been married for a couple of years, and most of the women in her family are single or divorced, so I'm usually the man anyone calls when they need help with something. I helped her cousin move by myself because she had no one else to call. Her cousin's house was dirty, and that made the process much longer. After all of that, she only paid me $20. Should I go off or let it be? Well, you done moved it now. You're not finna get yeah. no more money. And that's probably all she had, huh? Yeah. See, what you got to do is stop saying yes. 
See, mm-hmm. quit answering your phone. Stop answering his phone, you said? Remember something about emergency. Man, call me. I, this emergency. Always, when you get an emergency phone call and it ain't one of your kids or your parents, mm-hmm. wait 48 hours before you return that call. And then when you call them after 48 hours, go, oh, man, I just saw this. Everything good? You all right, man? And then they're going to go, go, huh? Yeah, dog, you said it was emergency. Let me explain something to you. All emergencies go away after 48 hours. Yes, they do. Yeah. All emergencies go away after 48 hours. Yeah, they do. Just don't pick up. So I wait 48 hours when I get them urgent calls, uh-huh. and I act like I'm on the spot. Man, I just saw this. You all right? They don't even know what you're talking about. Man, I heard you had an emergency. Are you comfortable telling this? Yeah. Should yeah. you, you lie on the cover? But, you know, no, I ain't got no problem. <laughs> But when people call you and they have an emergency, yeah. they really need you. You're not going to help. If you're yeah. not my now child, they're gonna know you're, you're not doing. my child or my wife, uh-huh. you need to get to fixing this emergency. You if you didn't you have my what? number, what would you do? Uh, okay. Uh, okay. See, because guess what they're going to do? They're going to fix that emergency. Mm-hmm. 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 You know what, Ark? You, you done did that to me a couple times. Absolutely. What, not answered you for two days? Yeah, because I go in the hospital on Monday. He don't never call to yeah, you. Yeah, but see, I know in your voice. Hey, Mm-mm. what's going on? You good? What? Uh. Boy? Uh. Dog, man, let me, man, you sound uh. horrible, boy. Let me call you back. He just leave right there. That's uh. him. Oh, yeah. Uh. Oh, yeah. He'll yeah. do it. That's him. Hey, uh. <laughs> uh. Hey. Yeah. Did he do that? He really yeah. did. Oh, no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> See, I I mean, once I was laying there. Never called. I was no. going to ask you that. Never time. called How you, How many times did he call you? No. He never called you? you talked to I my called wife. his he wife, though. Me. Oh, okay, yeah. Called his wife, text, checked on him, asked mm. what you need. But it was 48 hours, though. You know he has a thing about that. Well, see, you know, it, you know I'm, it, was not, it wasn't no emergency. I knew he was in there, so... I just call, check, you know, if they need anything. Stop you know, talking. You You're making it work. Yes, I can't I stop talking. I don't care how you feel about me. You know, I, ain't no doctor. I knew he was in there. What? What is I'm going to go down there, there for? I don't know how to read no medical chart or nothing. What? You know, we I didn't can, ask I don't you know to be the that. doctor. Read the I don't medical read charts. Chart. I don't know how to uh, <laughs> put in chemo. I don't know I mean, none of that. Chemo? Yeah. You know, all I. Dog, I can pray for you. Wait and minute, ask you if you need some money. Let That's all I got for you. Let me ask you something. Huh? Are you capable of sitting in hospital rooms? Are you capable of doing that? Not if you're not my wife or my child. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. I can't do it. I, I stick my head in your door, man. Check on you. Make sure you're good. But I can't stay that long. I don't take no seat in the hospital. No, sir. <laughs> No, so I stand the whole time. Now, so does this, does this go both trust ways? Me, trust Steve? me, that seat ain't comfortable anyway. If, God forbid if you ever landed in the hospital for whatever reason, and we certainly hope that doesn't happen. But just for clarity, I was. What, how do you it. want? What do you want us to do? Do you want us you to want wait us to forty-eight come, hours? I would come up there. I don't really you. expect nobody to come by there. I would come by there. Huh? You know, yeah, but of course we can. We, we, we are coming. not you. We, we, we well, I'm gonna tell you right now. Everybody work for me. I'm gonna have so much stuff in that hospital room. It's kind of hard to gonna be hard to get in there because last time I went in the hospital I bought in flat screen TV crock <laughs> pot I was in there cooking I was in there cooking and everything <laughs> cause ain't no seasoning on the food I, I went into the hospital with salt and pepper I had soul seasoning Laris McCormick oh God, we have to go. had all that in the bag Hot Sir, what's in that pressure. bag? Don't touch the damn bag. Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. According to CNBC experts, shorter people yes, come on, can what? expect to live longer based on the health and body chemistry that they have. Hell okay? yeah, because they ain't got to duck out the way or nothing. I'll be back. I'm going to go get some tea. Right. No, you're going to listen to this story. Uh, We're going to be here a minute, man. You know what? It's good. We're in the air. You Why can't are you walk leaving? away. Yeah, this is not he about. He can go through doorways. He can walk up under, like, you know, when you got to see a pay phone, you can walk right up under that. A pay phone? Yeah, you can walk under pay phones. You there are no to, pay phones. You ain't got to duck to go under no ladder. You can just walk your ass right on by there, you know. Tell me, th- climb in the bouncy house with it. the kids. I ain't got to bend over, just jump right on in. Th- this has nothing to do with you, Tommy. Research shows that individuals, well, with smaller well, bodies, you? have lower death rates and fewer diet related 
chronic diseases, especially yeah, middle-aged people. That's um, age, that's hell. Um, yeah. <laughs> he run all day, he in good ass shape, so you ain't got to worry about nothing happening to him. <laughs> this information mad. has sparked a big debate on Twitter because shorter people finally feel like they, they're they being acknowledged for their they height should. as a positive and it's not a, a negative. It's a good thing to be short. You know, you Dang got God. less body for an illness to attach yourself to. Oh, my God! Uh, that's what you got out of that? That's what you got out of that. We'll have more on yeah. the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Stand tall, Tommy. At 33 minutes after the hour. All that. 33 minutes after the hour, we'll do a round of Would You Rather right after this. I'd rather not. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It's time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather have a boogie in your nose or food stuck in your front tooth? Which one? B. <laughs> Ew B. and ew. Yeah, yeah. Uh, give me that. Give me that. You can get yeah. that out. Yeah. Yeah, you can explain that. But yeah, you, yeah, someone would have to tell you that though. Yeah, we don't. I right. don't want, we, we don't like doing childish ass. Would you rather? So, you know. <laughs> would you? Ra- oh, you don't. <laughs> would you rather have long toes or would you rather have baby teeth, little bitty hey. teeth? Hey. Yeah. yeah. Long toes. Yeah, yeah I, I'm going to go with long toe. Yeah. Them little chicklets, I don't want that. I don't want them little <laughs> Little corn teeth. Yeah, I don't <laughs> want that. Okay. All right. Steve, you want the you want the long toes? Oh, yeah, I smile too much. <laughs> we smile for a living. Yeah, all your damn Would teeth you? the exact same. Can't. Little bitty ass little teeth look like corn. Uh-uh. <laughs> You Would can't you have rather... big lips and little teeth. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> we would never yeah. have your teeth. Because you would never teeth. see them then. I'd be smiling. Yeah. You won't even know it. <laughs> Where are his teeth? That's a you visual. won't know it. <laughs> yeah. Would you rather travel? <laughs> 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 ah. <laughs> Boy, they were so clean. young to, to have no teeth. Would you rather travel every week for three months or not leave the house at all? I'd have done that my whole life. That's my career. That's yeah. all of us. Yeah. That's what we do. Yeah. Traveling every, every week. Can't we ain't do. used to that Can't break at that. home. Staying at home. Mm-hmm. All you know. time. Oh, man. So well, you would rather COVID, travel? Is that what you're saying? I'd rather travel. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. travel. In 2020, yeah. COVID. Oh, I was at the house. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm traveling. <laughs> 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 As soon as I could get out, I got what? it. God. <laughs> would, you, would you rather He's get so quality good. sleep every night or have great sex every night? Mm. Oh, I'm going to get some some sleep after the sex. I'd rather yeah. have quality yeah. sex. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. yeah, you get good sex, you going to get knocked out. <laughs> that sleep come right after you. Oh, you finna get some sleep. <laughs> sleep me. That's a win-win. Oh, oh, hell win-win. Yeah. Wait a minute. Did you just say sleep me? Yeah. yeah. Sleep, sleep me. me. <laughs> All right, yeah. last one, oh. guys. Would you rather live with seven small dogs or with three wives? Mm. Three dogs. Huh? Oh, no. Oh, no, no. The dogs. Oh, no, I want yeah. them dogs. Oh, hell no. You want the dogs? I want yeah. them damn dogs. Seven? Oh, no. Oh, hell no. yeah. Give me all seven of them. I'm not mm-hmm. finna hear all What's this. What's wrong with three wives? Uh, Hell no. You can hook them up to hell. I wouldn't dream and about that. Dogs. Sister wives. Mm-hmm. Oh. No, Lord. No. The Run one I got don't act right. They got a new show nah. called nah. The <laughs> hell I'm finna be in it now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not finna do these. I'm, I'm finna do these dogs. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm all finna right. speak dog. I'm finna <laughs> speak dog. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> all right, look. <laughs> That's today's round of Would You Rather. <laughs> And uh, we'll be back with our uh, last break of the day and close out the show with the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. It took four murders before the police finally realized that one person was responsible. I will admit the others when you catch me if you can. Sign. Freeway fan. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. It appeared that she was probably either dragged out of the car or thrown out of the car. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen by the mother. Did my mother see me? That guy is, he's out of sync with even the worst people. 
I thought that they would catch him. I thought it was just a matter of time. Is it possible that the killer is still alive? Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, guys, here we are, our last break of the day on this Wednesday. Steve's back and in rare form as usual. <laughs> yeah. Craziness. <laughs> hey, you know what? Uh, what? Play, can, you, can you play that excerpt that that guy did? Scott Adams, the Dilbert yeah. creator. Mm-hmm. Can we play that? If you know, nearly half of all blacks uh, are not okay with white people, according to this poll, not according to me, according to this poll, uh, that's a hate group. That's a hate group. And I don't want to have anything to do with them. And I would say, you know, based on the current way things are going, the best advice I would give to white people is to get the hell away from black people. Mm. You know, after you played that, I went online, I went online and I found it. And I listened to his whole thing. Mm-hmm. And that's not even the worst of it. You know, he was talking about what all he's done for black people. And he's just over it. He said he's not doing anything else for black people. These are my closing remarks today. So this guy, all y'all, we sick of all y'all. Ta-da! For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen. I will admit the others when you catch me if you can. Signed, Freeway Phantom. Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, this is Chelsea Handler. And I'm Catherine Law. We are the hosts of the Dear Chelsea podcast, where we give advice to real life people. Sometimes we have experts, sometimes we have celebs on helping us. Guests like Ross Matthews, Matthew McConaughey, Juliana Margulies, Gwyneth Paltrow, and so many more. We answer questions on anything from drugs to relationships. We've even broken people up. Yes, I take a lot of credit for breaking people up. I am a relationship wrecker. And just motivation. Sometimes people just need a kick in the ass, and that's what I am. And we encourage people to live their lives truly, fully, and bravely. Listen to Dear Chelsea on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Danny Shapiro, host of the hit podcast, Family Secrets. Each episode explores a long-held family secret that has finally come to light. Find out what keeps millions of people tuning in to hear astonishing stories about the secrets that are kept from us, the secrets we keep from others, and yes, even the secrets that we keep from ourselves. I hope you'll join me and my extraordinary guests for this new season of Family Secrets. Listen to season eight of Family Secrets on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.